Hi there, welcome back to the Community of Readers video blog. We're following the Old Testament readings for the Monkey Bar Challenge, and this week we're in the final chapters of Numbers. This is called Scared to Choose. I remember when my son was two, and he was struggling with numerous different things at the same time. Nappies, to potty, cot, to bed. Things in his life were going through some small revolution and he was none too happy about the change. He was in danger of joining the great ranks of humans who would resist an important development in life and risk being worse off as a result. This is what happens to the Israelites in the early chapters of Numbers. In Numbers chapter 14, there's this key moment where they have to face a decision. Are they going to invade the promised land or are they going to stay put in the desert? When decision moment comes and the rumours of the intimidating descendants of Anak scare them off, they bottle it and they choose to stay put, stay put. In the end, they end up f facing a possibly an even more difficult path by choosing the fierce ire of the desert. The reality is that making choices is really difficult. Decision making is one of the most difficult things that we do in life. Let's take a, 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 a modern day controversy. The Iraq war. Should America and Britain and others have chosen to invade a country unprovoked? I remember at the time here in Britain when Tony Blair, who was the Prime Minister at the time, was making the argument for the invasion. And a key part of his argument was that to do nothing was dangerous. So doing something was dangerous and doing nothing was dangerous. Now years on that we've had the question of should we stay in Iraq or should we withdraw troops? Again once you've committed to something to stay seemed bad but to just pull out seemed bad. How do you make a choice? between bad and bad. So the reality is in decision making that we so often don't actually have the choice between good and evil. But really we're just trying to salvage good by choosing from between the lesser of two evils. The case in numbers is interesting because actually what happens is the community has to bear the consequences of a choice that is made by just some of its members. Back to the Iraq example, if as many critics as have claimed the war produces a whole new generation of Islamist terrorists, we'll all have to live with the consequences whether we were in support of the war or not. Because choices, decisions are so difficult and yet their consequences ring on in the years to come. And we face the consequences of choices made by others. Just as others will face the consequences of choices that we make. But the experience of the desert was not all negative. The presence of the Lord hovered still over the tent of meeting. We remember from the Exodus story that it was the presence of the Lord that was the primary goal of the Israelites liberation from Egypt. Israel might have been in this wandering wasteland 
But at least that's where God was too. And as their suffering grew, as poisonous snakes entered the camp, they had the bronze snake onto which they could look for healing. We all find ourselves in wilderness experiences from time to time, whether for days, weeks, months or even years. And no amount of praying or striving can get us out. Sometimes we're there through no fault of our own. But as John said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man has been lifted up. That image of Jesus on a cross is a powerful force of healing for people in barren places. A nomad who knows the desert well, Jesus holds in his nail-pierced hands all the balm of heaven for desperate regret. A courage, a casualty of his own courage and a victim of his own restraint. Jesus welcomes cowards and zealous fools alike. As Numbers gets towards the end, it becomes more optimistic. Victories over the Amorites and the Midianites give a sense that this wilderness exile is coming to an end. The Israelites will face new challenges in the Promised Land. And again, their ability to face change will be tested. But for now, while we reflect on what it's like to be in the wilderness and whether we have the courage to face the difficult choices that await us, perhaps, perhaps Moses, in this instance, gives us some inspiration. Because while we feel broken, powerless, alone. Surviving the desert requires courage and patience, confidence and humility. They said of Moses that he was the most humble man that ever walked the earth. Let's let numbers inspire us to emulate that humility and to avoid the deep rebellion of the Israelites. Here's a couple of questions for reflection. What are you afraid of? And how do you think that those fears affect your day-to-day -day choices? You can find out more about Community of Readers and the Monkey Bar Challenge at our website, communityofreaders.com. Till next week and the first part of the story of Deuteronomy, have a great week. Cheers.